Hackers do not cause breaches, people do, because people are the weakest link. So they did something they weren't supposed to do or they failed to do something they were supposed to do. Perfect example, I make my home in South Carolina. Four years ago, someone hacked into the tax revenue office and stole 3.8 million tax returns of the citizens mm -hmm. of South Carolina. That was everyone, including me. If you had paid your state taxes by check, they had an image of your check. So they knew where you banked, what your account number was, what check number you were on, how you actually signed your check. If you paid by credit card or debit card, they had that information. When that breach occurred, I got a call. I was in the FBI office in Phoenix, and they got a call from our local TV station because they knew I had been a victim and they wanted a comment from me knowing how much I've dealt with identity theft. And I said to them, well, let me ask you this. What does the state tax revenue office say? Oh, they said they did absolutely nothing wrong. I said, that would be absolutely, literally impossible. Mm -hmm. Somebody did something. After a two-month Secret Service investigation, it was determined an employee took home a laptop they weren't supposed to take home, opened it in an unsecured environment. The hacker got in. Our governor then, Nikki Haley, former ambassador to the UN, she ordered that everyone be uh, paid a credit monitoring service for one year. I didn't know the governor, but I sent her an email from DC and told her this would be a waste of money and the taxpayer's time. People who steal mass data warehouse that data, usually typically for three to four years. This is why we're just starting to see Target, Equifax, uh, State of Cal South Carolina. If you steal credit cards and debit card numbers, you have to get rid of them almost immediately. They have a very short shelf life. But if I steal your name, your social security number, your date of birth, you can't change your name. You can't change your social security number. You can't change your date of birth. So the longer I hold it, when I go to sell it, the more valuable it becomes. First, you've already told them I got one year of credit monitoring service, so they're monitoring my credit. So I'm not gonna do anything for at least one year. Mm -hmm. So that's why these breaches, there's a long period of time between the actual breach, and then people start to feel comfortable and say, well, nothing ever came of that. And then all of a sudden, they start having issues, and so much time has gone by, they don't even relate it to that. Well, that must have been from that target breach uh, a few years ago. They don't even think about that. They think something they did wrong and gave somebody some information they shouldn't have gave them. So the weakest link in that South Carolina situation was the employee, the employee. who took home the laptop or, or mobile device yeah. and was on an unsecured network or, or whatever the situation was. And that ended up, I can't even imagine what the cost, total cost would be to the state. If they did the credit monitoring, that's a fortune. The uh, notification would be a fortune, probably if there's some legal issues that come up. And so really in that case, I think it sounds like a really perfect example of the weakest link being a person right. doing, being lazy or uninformed one time, clicking on one thing, and it ended up, ended up costing probably millions of dollars. And the interesting part of this story is that the tax commissioner was fired, resigned. A new tax commissioner came, his name was Rick Reens. The, he immediately contacted me and said, how much can we pay you to come in and educate our employees about how important it is to keep this information safe. I said, no, you don't need to pay me. I'm a citizen of this state. I wanna make sure my neighbors and my information is safe. So I've made maybe six visits to our tax revenue office in Columbia. I worked with helping educate those employees, but the employee in question who took the laptop home, no one ever told her, this is what someone can do if you get in this uncontrolled environment and they get this information, they can get into the system, they can steal all this data. You have to educate people in their job to, one, explain to them, you have an extremely important job, and your number one job is to keep the information entrusted to the company by its clients, its customers, its citizens safe. That's your number one job. So you have to teach them about phone calls that are using uh, information to get information from you and soliciting information, emails, and how to read emails. That's something taught. You just not know that because basically people are honest and because they're honest, they don't have a deceptive mind. This is why what imp impressed me so much that when Threat Advice came along, I literally said, I don't know of any company that does this. And I get asked all the time, well, where can we get this training? But well, I don't know anybody that does that kind of training. That's so badly needed, whether it be a bank, a corporation, a government, a mom and pop store, to have somebody basically teach in a very simple, easy to understand, not make it difficult and involved, 
that this is why it's important to keep information safe. This is how you keep it safe. This is when you know someone's trying to gain access to information, whether it be on the phone, on the computer. Again, that must be taught, just like seniors need to be taught what calls are fallacious and phony and what emails are phony. They have to be taught that. They're not going to just know that. And I appreciate you saying that. And, and when I first thought of you back a, a good while ago, knowing your story, having heard you before, and knowing your fine reputation and thinking about what we do as a company at Threat Advice, and it seemed like we would be on the same mission, and, and we are, and that's helping people stay safe and to beat the crooks. And so you're right, part of what we do, or a lot of what we do is the education because it's the lady in South Carolina that took the laptop home and did something she shouldn't, or somebody that's on uh, public Wi-Fi at Starbucks at lunch and they get suckered into being on fake Wi-Fi and they have their enterprise issue device, or there's just so many creative ways these bad guys can get into the network. And we do try to teach people on a non-technical level how to avoid that. And so thank you for saying that. Um, talk to me just for a minute about the impact of a breach in just South Carolina, for instance, or, or, or we talked about Target, but no matter if you're a five person law firm or a huge uh, Fortune 100 company, a breach is substantial, a breach can put you out of business. And so, so talk to me a little bit about the but cost. There are so many breach. things you can do. For example, if I breach a law firm and I have all the data on all their clients, their clients' children, their clients' grandchildren, and then I say to them, unless you pay me this amount of money, I'm going to release all of this uh, data. Uh, I, there's the ransom side of it where I can abstract money from people. Uh, there's a side of it just me taking that information and selling it to somebody else who will disperse it and use it against somebody, and all of that is due to the cause of failure of you. You caused that breach to occur, that information got out there. So I mean, there's so many things people can do with information, and that's again, if you're not educated about it or understand it, uh, you don't really think about all the ramifications, but if you meet someone who's had their identity stolen, they live with it for years, with having problems trying to get credit, trying to get uh, even a simple credit card, and they keep saying, you know, that happened a long time ago, someone stole my day. But it's very difficult to get it straightened out once it happens to you. So it's very important that we as companies, corporations, banks, realize that you have to prevent crime. You can't rely on the government, uh, the bank, to protect you, the police. You have to be a little smarter consumer today. Mm -hmm. You have to be a little wiser businessman today. You have to think ahead and you have to be smart enough to make sure that you are educating your employees to deal with these issues every day. You can't just set it aside saying, oh, that won't happen to me or we never had a problem like that. You know, people bring that up to me all the time and I say, well, let me ask you this. You have life insurance? Yeah. Do you plan to die tomorrow? No. You have life insurance, right? You have home insurance? Yeah. Your house going to burn down? Oh, no, I hope not. But you have it. It's the same way here. It's insurance against having that happen to you mm -hmm. and happening to your clients, which you should be protecting your clients. You know, there's a quote on my website uh, from 1976 where I simply said that the recovery of funds is so rare, restitution and the recovery of funds are so rare, that the only solution is prevention. Mm -hmm. And today, that's the same thing today. So prevention would be, there's some software that can help you, but you would say the most important piece is just making sure your back doors, i.e. your employees and, and vendors and other ways, have enough knowledge to be able to not click on something they shouldn't or to do something that they shouldn't and let the bad guys in. What, what I like about Threat Advice is it's basically educating people. It's not me saying, here's a piece of software, put this in and it'll catch most of these things. You have to worry about it. So your employees can be stupid about it because this software will catch everything, which is not going to happen. What I like about Threat Advice is they take the simple thing to let me explain and teach your employees in a very simple, again, easy to understand, not difficult, format so once they grasp that they're able to deal with these issues as they come along but if you never had that training you would never even understand you're being socially engineered or you're being scammed without someone telling you up ahead of time how to prevent that from happening to you 
What are some of the costs, if, if you're a company, what are some of the costs that you can incur if you get breached? And, and I ask this because I think companies, for the most part, underestimate what their ultimate costs might be if they get breached. It can, can cost billions of dollars. So, you know, now I speak at a lot of these insurance companies like Chubb that are introducing cyber insurance. Mm -hmm. But when I go speak to them, I say to them, I would not write this insurance unless you can assure me as the policyholder that you have educated all of your employees on how to deal with these problems, that you have systems in place to protect the company from having these problems. Uh, it is amazing to me that you'd want to go write insurance and not do that, because then if you have a loss and it was a cause of an employee, uh, that's because you didn't train your employee, then your insurance company is taking a huge hit. So it would seem to me it would behoove the insurance company to say, look, I'll cover this, and the fact that you do these things have to be in place, or my policy is null and void. This is the same thing I've said to insurance companies 20 years ago when they were writing errors and emissions insurance, forgery insurance, fraud insurance. I said, look, you have to say the company, a bookkeeper can't write, sign, and reconcile. You have to segregate those duties. You have to reconcile on a timely basis every, every 30 days. If you're not doing this and six months later you find a fraudulent check for $100,000 because you didn't reconcile, then you don't pay that claim. Mm -hmm. That needs to be in your policy and that's the same with cyber today and I think you're going to see more and more companies that want to buy cyber insurance to cover these, these accidents are going to see they're going to have to train their employees anyway because the insurance company is not going to do it unless they can provide that they've actually authenticated and trained their employees with some kind of documentation that they've done so. Mm -hmm. And if you have that documentation, that's going to go a long way to lowering your premium or whatever that premium is from that insurance right. company. Right. Talking about cost and thinking through the cost of someone's breach, number one that comes to mind would be most all states now have breach notification law. You got to let your clients and customers and people that are associated with you know, hey, you have you know, your information is stolen because of me. People don't n really know how expensive that is, but that's an expensive proposition for sure. Very expensive, and also how many companies don't even have a plan. So they at least say, now if we ever were have a breach, these are the things we've got to immediately do. So Equifax is a good example of that. Then when it happens, they're all sitting there going, what do we do? Uh, mm. Let's not tell anybody, you know, let's wait 60 days, see if we can figure out what's going on. All of those things that get them in a lot deeper trouble and put them in a much more liable uh, position because first you have to have a plan. What's my plan if we do have a breach? What steps do I need uh, to take? And again, the most important thing would be, first, let's not have the breach, so let's take the necessary steps. But yes. It costs company millions and millions of dollars, not to mention reputation and their trademark. The hundred year old trademark or the years they've been in business, they, they do business based on their brand and how it destroys their brand from one little incident. So even if you don't put the money side of it, the destroying of the brand eventually destroys the company and the company's image. So breach notification, obviously actual financial costs. You mentioned reputational costs and you can Think of some of the big breaches we right. know of the last few years, and there's no question, and not picking on Target at all, you could you could say, you know, Home Depot or, or whoever it is, if you get breached, then I as a consumer, probably not going to get a new credit card with you for a no, while. No, you lost my trust. That's right. Absolutely. What about forensic costs and, and what I mean is if I get breached I gotta have some some professionals come in and help me get all my stuff back up and running. Right. That's a, a substantial yeah, There cost. are so many costs involved and that's just another cost and then I gotta go fix the problem so I gotta find out how the problem happened, how do I fix the problem so it doesn't happen again, what other problems do I have that are lurking out there that need to be fixed. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. So this is why if someone said to me, look, you can spend X amount of money, educate your employees. And here's another thing. If you say to me, here's Bank A, they have a great program in place where they educate all of their employees about making their bank cyber safe. That is a tremendous value add to me as a consumer or a business person than Bank B that says, no, we don't do anything like that. 
we don't have any programs in place like that. Uh, obviously, it is also a great value add to say we train our employees. You know, a lot of times people like to keep those things secret, like, well, you know, we really educate our employees about that. We have great programs in place. We test them constantly. They don't want to tell anybody that. And I say, no, tell them, because that's what sets you aside from everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's a tremendous uh, value add to me. Have you seen on the legal side litigation relative to easy class certification? If I'm a restaurant chain and I get breached, it's pretty easy to tell who the class is in the case of a lawsuit. It's anybody that's ever given right. me a credit card. So have you seen a proliferation of attorneys that are kind of going after these uh, companies that have been breached? Absolutely. And we're seeing more and more laws where the government is basically regulating and saying that you will be held liable if that breach was caused by a mistake you made or something you didn't do you were supposed to have uh, in place. So, I mean, Equifax has hundreds of uh, lawsuits against them that they'll eventually have to settle or pay out of court. That could have easily been prevented, should have never happened to begin with. So, you know, it's, it's very important to always look at going into anything like cyber or protecting a company is the prevention side of it. What can I do to make sure I'm not a victim? It's just like your house. How do I make sure I don't have a fire? You know, do I have smoke detectors? Do I have fire extinguisher handy, uh, that I don't keep things in my garage. It's the same thing in a business. What can I do to make sure this, I never have this problem? And one of them, and the most important of all, is to train your employees, because they're the first line defense, but they're also the weakest link. So that's the most time you want to spend your money and your time. We've talked about hotel, recent breach. Oh, yes. We've talked about a couple of retailers that have been breached. What do you see today as the top two or three targets, if there are a top two or three, for bad guys as a whole? My personal opinion is I think in the next two or three years, you're going to see a breach of millions upon millions upon millions of search engines. So that I can say to the mayor, hey, um, I know this is what you look at on your computer, uh, and I'm going to tell the world that unless you pay me this. Think of all the things people look, whether it's medical, whether it's pornography, whatever it is, or what they say on their computer, their emails, all that. I think we're going to see where it's not a it's half a billion, it's going to be a billion or more breaches of search engines. Now, if I'm Joe Blow, the plumber down the street, I'm not going to get any money out of Joe if I say, I know you look at pornography and you hang out with hookers and all that. But if I'm the president of a bank, the mayor of a city, a politician, the chief of police, someone like that, those would be the targets of those people who are society, substantial people in their society or well-respected in their society. And who wouldn't pay it if I say I'm going to release everything you've searched on your computer at home or in your work? Technical extortion. Exactly. Do you, from an industry standpoint, find that one industry or two industries above all is the most lucrative for cyber criminals today. For instance, I believe that, that medical records are, are very lucrative in terms of you know selling the information. So would you say possibly the health industry is the number one target or is it kind of an equal opportunity uh, it, employer in terms of, of who the bad guys it's go It's equal after? opportunity, but you know, I'm floored by the medical side of it. You know, I go to the doctor they pull my file out of a file rack that they do not lock up at night. They've already made a copy of my driver's license. They have my social security number. They have all my medical information. And when they go home at night to put it back in the file, they don't lock the cabinet. So if I was doing what I did 50 years ago, I'd be sitting outside in the parking lot. And when the janitorial service came, I'd say to the guy, hey, how would you like to make a lot of money very quick? Uh, what I have to do. When you go into the doctor's office, you pull out a file and you take your phone and you take a picture of this data I want. Don't touch anything. Don't steal anything. Just put the file back where you got it. Give me that. And for each one of those you give me, I give you a hundred dollar bill. So if you give me five, I give you 500, 10, 10, 10. That's what I'd be doing. So it's amazing in the medical side how none of this information is kept safe. This is people's personal health messages, but also all the personal data that's with it. Their social security number, their date of birth, their nearest relative, the information about their relatives because of disease, what other relatives have. 
Uh, so that to me is a huge, huge problem and a very open uh, problem for cyber criminals. And of course, the financial world always, to be able to hack into wire transfers and banks or getting information from whether they be a financial service company or a bank. Uh, if I was, if I was uh, someone today that said, and you said to me, who should threat advice be their main customer? Without question, it would be a financial institution. Any company handling somebody's money and keeping their information safe should be using threat advice. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Everyone should, but if you said, okay, just carve me out one industry that should be doing this, I would say the financial industry and followed by health, the health industry. Mm -hmm. Where, and to wrap it up, and thank you so much for your time today, where do you, do you see this, and I look at just the last three years, five years, it's gotten a lot more serious. There's a lot more breaches. There's a lot more people losing a lot of money. It's, it's really kind of gone from a, that happens to somebody else right. to it's happening to everybody right. and it's really a big deal. Where do you see the whole cyber war, I'll call it, going from now to five or 10 years from now? Which is hard to predict, I know. Well, I think, you know, I've always said that at a point, cyber is going to turn black. As of now, cyber is all about making money and stealing data, which data is money. But if I can get the ability to shut your pacemaker off, if I can take control of your car, if I can get into your bank accounts and things of that nature, or even control some of the health th issues you may have, uh, that's where it becomes black. I can shut off an electrical grid. I can turn, shut off a bank. I can shut off a lot of things. That's going to become more of a terrorist tool, more of a state tool to uh, make the other country uh, less, less effective. I think that's where cyber's going. Up until now, it's all been about money and finance, but it is slowly becoming a very black uh, mm -hmm. tool to commit a lot worse crimes with. So would you think it's a fair statement to say that our threat from North Korea or China or Russia isn't a combat war? that it's more of a threat for them to shut down the entire power grid of the eastern seaboard and ruin our economy. Absolutely. North Korea has schools, four-year college programs, that basically all are about just doing that. That's all they go to school for is to learn how to break into systems, get data, shut down systems. They have the ability to do it now. They don't do it because of retaliation, but they're using it as a tool they will have, just like you would build a jet that you may not use today but you're going to build it because you need it in the future. It's the same thing uh, they're doing. And I also think that when it comes to things like threat advice, this is going to become, in my opinion, in the next two or three years, not something you'd like to do or maybe you'd consider doing. It's going to become mandatory because the government's going to get in now to more regulation of keeping this data safe, just as they've done in Europe. And they're going to start mandating that if you have a company, you have to educate your employees about keeping that information safe. And you're gonna to have to be able to document that and say, I've done that. And again, let's say that you have done that. Think how much that goes if you were sued to say, well, I've done everything I could possibly do. I've put in the best systems. I've trained my employees. They can testify that they've gone through mm -hmm. these programs. That's just a positive for you. So that's why I'm really excited about working with Threat Advice because I truly believe that is the key to helping cut down a lot of these cyber risks now and in the future. Well, I want to speak on behalf of the company and tell you how excited we are to have you as a, as a partner and a, and a spokesperson. And it's just been a joy today to get to hang out with you and, and chat and talk and hear some of your very, uh, very uh, informed opinions and thoughts on things. It's, it's an honor to to have you aboard and honor, consider you a friend, and we just really look forward to uh, doing some great things with you in the great future. Thank you very Thank much, you Steve. So My much. pleasure. All right.